Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. It is lecture time with me, Madam Sharifah Fatin Zulaika. And for those who haven't known me, this is my picture. And I would like to say it's nice meeting all of you. Well, this week we're going to enter into a new chapter which is internet technology. And for this particular lecture, we're going to focus on the first subtopic which is basic concept of network. Before that, what is your first thought when it comes to the word internet technology? Hmm, some of you may have thought it is the internet itself, which is simply a Wi-Fi that connects your computer, like your laptop, to the internet. But it is more than that. This is the overview of what you will learn in the chapter 2 in the next few weeks, and we will get to know what is actually internet soon enough. And today, specifically, the lecture will be about basic concept of network. But wait, just now I talk about internet. Why suddenly we have to learn about network? What is the relation between these two? Is it the same thing? Well, actually, internet and network is two different things. Internet is the relationship of computers connecting with other computers from all around the world. While on the other side, network is the connection of one or more computers in one place. And for example, here inside a house. So now you already know what is the difference between internet and network. So, these are the flow for our lecture today. And first, we will look at the objective that we will be covering today together. Second, we will go into more detail on the concept or the definition of a network in general. We will also see what are inside a network, which consists of communication devices and transmission media. Last but not least, the summary of what you have learned in the lecture today. So, objective. At the end of the lesson today, you will be able to first explain the concept of network and second, explain the types of communication device and transmission media used in a network. Let's see, what is a network actually? Simply, network is a collection of computer and devices that are connected together via communication devices and transmission media. And from the definition just now, you will notice that inside a network, it must be involving communication device and transmission media. Before we go into detail about these two, do you notice this word here? Communication. What does it mean by communication? Communication here refers to a process where two or more computers or devices communicate with each other and they communicate by transferring and by transferring here meaning sending and receiving data instructions and information over a transmission media via one or more communication device. Let's get to know first what is communication devices and their examples. Communication device. Conversion device acts as a medium of communication between sending devices and receiving devices. It is essentially as any type of hardware. And sending devices here meaning that any devices that want to transfer or transmit data instruction or information while receiving device is any device that receiving back what data information or instructions that have been sent by the sending devices. Here are the classic examples of communication device and we will go look at it one by one. Before that, we do know that computer only understands digital signals like zeros and ones from what we have learned back in chapter one, right? And in order to, uh, in order for the device or computer to be able to communicate with other devices or even wanting to connect to the internet, they need to use analog signals. Well, what is analog signals, by the way? Analog signals is any continuous signal that uses one-time variable quantity such as audio recording, television broadcast signals, and radio signal. As you can see from the diagram here, digital signals is very different to analog signal. Hence, to help with converting between these two signals, 
modems comes to the rescue. There are a few types of modems and the first one is dial-out modem. Dial-out modem is a communication device that can convert between digital and analog signals so that the data are able to travel using analog telephone lines. And we also have digital modem. Digital modem is the same as dial-out modem except that it sends and receives data and information to and from a digital line using the cable television network. So the keyword here, digital modem use cable television network, while that up modem use a telephone, analog telephone line. Okay, there are three types of digital modem, which is ISDN modem, DSL modem, and cable modem. So we look at modem, we also have router. And compared to modem, which can only connect to one device at a time, a router allows to connect multiple computers and devices or other routers together and, and transmit data to its correct destination on a network. Speciality of router is that it ensures all the data goes to its extended destination only. And routers also support wireless communication. Then we have a switch or hub is a device that provides a central point for cables in a network. Larger networks typically use a hub, while smaller networks use a switch. And compare these two, switch is more advanced than a hub. The diagram here shows how a hub or a switch becoming a central point that connects several devices in a network together and at the same time connecting with other networks. Switch or hub have a similar functions with a router where it controls and manages the data flow in a network by ensuring that the data packet transmitted to its intended address only. In some cases, with hub and switch include a router in their network. And why is this? They need a router when they're receiving data from many directions and also wanting to forward the data to one or more destinations. Then we have repeater. What is repeater? Repeater is a communication device that helps to increase the communication distance between communicating nodes. And communicating nodes simply is a transmitter and receiver. And here we have an example here. We have this one computer from a local area network named A wanting to send signal to this computer here in local area network B. So what it will do first, it will, it will send the signal to the repeater and then the repeater will leave that signal given from this computer and it will amplify that signals and then it will transmit the signal to the particular computer in the local area network named B. The signal can travel over a longer distance. However, repeater is almost outdated and replaced by hub and switch. Then we have wireless modem. What is wireless modem? Wireless modem have an external obedient antenna and there can be in a form of USB flash drive, express card modules, PC cards, and also memory cards. Do you know that some smartphones can also function as a wireless modem? Have you heard of a mobile hotspot? Mobile hotspot is your mobile is being tilted to a personal computer or another mobile devices in order to connect to the internet wirelessly. Then we have a network card, or also known as a network interface card. And it is a card where it allows devices or computer to access a network. The card usually installed in a computer or devices that do not have the capability to access a network. The network card helps to coordinate the transmission and receipt of data instructions and information to and from the computer or devices. And the diagram here shows you an adapter card of a desktop, which has a port where a cable could connect into it. Then we have wireless access point, or in a short form, we call it WAP. WAP is a central communication devices that allows computers and devices to transfer data wirelessly among themselves or to a wired network using wireless technologies such as Wi-Fi. We're done with looking at communication device. Let's see now what is the transmission media. Transmission media, just like its name, transmitting media is actually a pathway that enables the data or information traveled from one device to another. And these devices could be sender or receiver. There are two types in transmission media. The first one is wired transmission media, or we call it physical transmission media it is visible. You can see it and you can touch it. It uses wires and cables and other tangible materials that can help to send communication signals. Example here you can see there are fiber optic cable, twisted pair cable and coaxial cable. The second type of transmission media is wireless transmission media. 
The communication signals sent through the air or space using a radio wave, microwave, and infrared. And examples that you can see from this uh, diagram here have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and cellular radio. Let's look at wired transmission media. First, twisted pair cable. What is twisted pair? Twisted pair cable is actually a set of two copper wires that have been bundled together. Why are these wires have been twisted? It's not twisted for fun or to make it pretty, but it's actually have a purpose that it helps to reduce noise, which is electrical disturbance. And this twisted pair cable usually used in a telephone and network connection. And twisted pair cable is often the cheapest option compared to other wired transmission media. Second type of wired transmission media is coaxial cable. Coaxial cable consists of a single copper wire surrounded by three layers. Okay, so the first one is insulation material. The second layer is the braided metal or woven. Third layer will be the plastic outer coating. And with having these three layers here, it helps the data being transmitted with little interruptions or distortions. And normally, it's coaxial cable being used for computer network and cable television delivery. Then we will look at fiber optic cable. Fiber optic cable consists of dozens and hundreds of glass. It is very thin, about a diameter of a human's hair and protected by an insulation area or we call it here protective coating. Fiber optic cable uses light to transmit signals. Fiber optic cable, it is free from electromagnetic and radio interface. Hence, the cable is very secure and able to transmit data for a long distance at a very high speed without any errors. If you want to know more on how the fiber optic cable works, you can go ahead, pause my lecture video and scan this QR code and it will lead to one of the YouTube videos. Once you are done, don't forget to come back and continue my lecture. So in summary, these are the transfer rates for each wired transmission media. And as you can see here, fiber optic cable is the fastest transmission media compared among these three cable. But then, why don't we just use fiber optic everywhere? Well, each cable here have its own use, its own pros and cons, advantages and disadvantages. And in some places, installing fiber optic cable may not be a practical choice to do so due to its very high setup cost and it requires complex installation. Now we are done with wired transmission media. Let's look at the types of wireless transmission media. The first type of wireless transmission media is cellular radio. What is cellular radio? Cellular radio uses a cellular network to enable high-speed internet connections will be in compatible technologies such as smartphones. And in the examples for cellular radio here we normally have is a mobile data internet. Next, we have Bluetooth. Bluetooth uses a short range of radio signals that enable computers and devices to be able to communicate with, it, with each other. And for example, you can see the Bluetooth headset here that allows you to connect to your smartphone wirelessly. Then we have Wi-Fi, which is short term for wireless fidelity. Wireless means here they use waves instead of using cables and fidelity means long lasting support. Well, Wi-Fi uses radio signals. Again, same as Bluetooth, both of them use radio signals and Nowadays, I would say most of computers and mobile devices such as smartphones are able to connect to the Wi-Fi network. Then we have microwave. Please, microwave here does not refer to the microwave in your kitchen right now. It is actually a radio wave that provides a high-speed signal transmission over a long distance. What I mean by long distance can be from one country to another country. And signal can be sent or received using microwave station like in the diagram here and also communication satellite. So satellite normally will receive the microwave signals coming from the microwave station on Earth and then it amplifies it and broadcasts the signals over a wider area. Then we have infrared. What is infrared? Infrared is simply a wireless transmission medium that sends signal using a light wave. And from the net itself, normally sends a red light wave. Infrared happens in a short distance, such as remote control here. When you press any button on your remote, you will notice there is a light coming out from the remote. And one thing about infrared is that the connection is very fragile, I would say, because you must point to the direction that you want to give the signals to, then only it will work. And second, you are not able to send the signal to the television if 
there are some things block the view or there is obstacles in front of it. Therefore, these are the list of wireless transmission media that we have covered today. So these are the transfer rate for each type of wireless transmission media. So now we have covered wireless transmission media and that leads to the end of our lesson today. And so the summary of what you have learned is first we have already looked at what is network in general, the definition of it. Then we also look at communication device, the definition and the types of communication device. And last, we look at transmission media definition and the types. There are two types of transmission media, wireless and wired. And we look at example for each wireless and wired transmission media. So that is all from me. Thank you very much for your attention.